Uh, and speaking about exciting teams, the Seahawks, they brought back the nice throwback jerseys from the 1990s themed era. I, I know I should have the logo with me here, but our graphics do. So there's that. Uh, the Seahawks were able to beat the Cleveland Browns, a tough Cleveland team. Obviously, if you pay attention to the NFL world, the uh, the football world in general, Cleveland's had a tough time as a franchise here in the National Football League. But they've got one of the best defenses in the league. And despite being without, uh, you know, their respectively played paid quarterback to Sean Watson uh, instead having XFL legend PJ Walker uh, under center this week. They've got a ton of weapons on offense and they put up a good fight for Seattle. A lot of big explosive plays early on the Seahawks put on 17 points in the first quarter, but went silent until the game winning drive from Geno Smith um, late into that fourth quarter uh, finding Rookie wide receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba on a little uh, wide receiver screens. If you're a Seahawks fan, wide receiver screens have not been your friend for a long time. That changed yesterday uh, as JSN took it to the house uh, in the red zone to score. And Seattle's defense was able to prevent any sort of Hail Mary from Cleveland uh, with time running out. So really nice to not only get this win against a good Cleveland team that had a really good defense. I talked about it last week. I was worried about Miles Garrett being a game wrecker. He didn't end up doing that. Uh, he almost did. He had a sack. His first sack of the game, Cleveland's first sack of the game, came late. Uh, seemed like it was going to stop any momentum that Seattle was going to be able to potentially build. And, you know, so that was really big uh, to not let one of the hottest players in the NFL on the defensive side of the ball uh, ruin your game plan. We're going to go over to offense here. I know that I just mentioned JSN had the game winning touchdown, but Tyler Lockett continues to be incredibly reliable and consistent for the Seahawks team. He, he's uh, been our player of the game on offense a, a few times already this year, year for Seattle. Eight receptions, 81 yards, and a touchdown in this game, including this nice back of the end zone score that you see on the screen. On your screen there. Uh, again, those just jerseys, man. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and they'll be wearing them again, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, even throughout the course of the game, early in that first quarter, Tyler Lockett was a big reason that Seattle was able to move down the field so well. Those explosive chunk plays, Seattle taking advantage of short yardage uh, and helped get them 17 points on the board. Cleveland's defense settled in. Uh, those next few quarters made things hard for the Seahawks. They were able to get those chunk plays on the game winning drive to win it there. Defensively, there are a few options that you could have gone with here. Uh, I went with Boye Mafe. Mafe has been big on the pass rush for Seattle this year. Coming in as a second year player, uh, pass rush has been an issue for the Seahawks the last few seasons. Uh, Chino Nuosu going down with an injury. We'll talk about him when we get to injury related news. That's a big uh, problem. Daryl Taylor will have to step up in his absence, but Mafe will need to continue to play as he has this season if Seattle wants to go to the promised land, and he did so today. Well, Sunday, eight tackles, three solo, one sack, one tackle for loss, four quarterback hits, and one fumble recovery in this game. All over the stat sheet for Seattle in this one, you could have gone with Jamal Adams, who ended up <laughs> heading a ball with his helmet. Uh, shouted out Messi for that one. The Sounders called him an honorary sounder on Twitter after that, uh, leading to an interception from Julian Love. Tariq Woolen had an interception in this game. So you could have gone a few different avenues, but I went with Boye Mafe. Inactives list, we'll go over the inactives briefly. Thankfully, nobody was too, uh, in terms of starters, outside of Phil Haynes on your screen there. DK Metcalf was sick the day before this game. He ended up being able to go, so that was good. Um, nobody too... Starter worthy on the inactive list, thankfully for Seattle, but still working on some offensive line issues. Abraham Lucas is still on injured reserve. Seattle, again, the nice, nice, ah, it is, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. I know a lot of folks who are uh, around for those days of the Seahawks, the Kingdom days, uh, will enjoy it more. I, again, don't mean to age anybody, but I wasn't alive during that time. So I apologize, but I can still appreciate how good they looked. The silver helmets, the jerseys themselves. A lot of people have called for Seattle to make them either an alternate or the permanent jerseys. I wouldn't be mad at either option necessarily, but we'll get to the game itself. Cleveland's a really good defense, a really good defense. The secondary, uh, I mean, they've still, they've got a lot of talent there. Not a, not a ton of big names necessarily, uh, but Denzel Ward has had uh, had a big game in this one. Miles Garrett, again, could have been a game wrecker for Seattle. Uh, they've got a ton of difference makers on that defense. 
They settled in after the first quarter, as I mentioned. Seattle puts up 17 of their 24 total points in the first quarter, slows down in quarters two and three, uh, and, and largely the fourth quarter. Again, there was a big drive that Seattle had late uh, where – a Miles Garrett sack kind of put the top on it, ended that. Seattle had to punt the ball away. Seattle's defense. I know I talked a lot already about the Cleveland defense. The Seahawks defense was a difference maker here, keeping them in this game, uh, you know, limiting anything that the Browns were able to do. And, you know, again, I know I mentioned it. I don't mean to put any disrespect on P.J. Walker. He was able to do his thing against Seattle and and give Cleveland a pretty good chance to win this ball game. Um and Seattle's defense was able to do enough to get their offense the ball back, give Geno another chance after he had a couple uh, rough. He had two interceptions in this game, two touchdowns, though. So I'm not too worried personally about Geno. No, there's a lot of conversation about it. You played a really good defense yesterday. I'm not going to put a ton of stock into a little bit of a struggle there. Your offensive line hasn't had consistency. If you are building a dream team, uh, or, or a successful football team in the National Football League, having a consistent group of ons- offensive linemen uh, is key. That doesn't necessarily mean they have to be stars. You just got to have a group that's able to gel and work together consistently. And Seattle hasn't had that. The amount of combinations on the offensive line that they've had is staggering. And for them to have that success on offense um, has been big. Stone Forsyth was the highest grade uh, playing at right tackle for most of the game. Jason Peters played right tackle on that final drive to help stop Miles Garrett. Um, he had the highest graded uh, running run block grade of the entire NFL yesterday. Seattle ran the ball well. I don't know why they got away from it in the third and fourth quarter. Uh, Kenneth Walker was able to generate well in the first half. Jack Charbonnet had a good drive uh, in the second half there. You've got two talented runners, Kenneth Walker, not only shifty, but he can lower his shoulder if he needs to. Zach Charbonnet can really run the football in a Pete Carroll-like style, and that means physical brute force running. Um, and I'd like to get those to the ball more. But you won this game. You got a tough one next week. We'll talk about that in a minute. We got to get to injury-related news. As I mentioned, unfortunately, uh, Uchenna Nwosu went down uh, last week against the Cardinals. Uh, hoped it was going to be something good. New as a pectoral issue. He is going to be out for the season. He needs surgery on a torn pectoral muscle. Uh, at a signing that he had recently, Nuosu said that he hopes to return for the playoffs. Knock on wood. Um, so that would be a big boost to Seattle's pass rush in the playoffs uh, if we get to that point. But it still stings right now. A productive player, not only uh, rushing the passer, but in the run game as well. So there was speculation if this move would happen even before Nuosu went on injured reserve. The team has brought back Frank Clark. Frank, in his second stint with Seattle, uh, excuse me, spent four, his first four years with the Seahawks before going to the Chiefs in a trade winning a ring there, uh, signed a one-year deal with the Broncos this past offseason, only played two games with Denver. Uh, Seattle will be paying Frank Clark the veteran minimum for those that have played the amount of games. So not too much, a little bit over a million, and I say not too much. Man, I would do a lot for a million, but who knows? Um, He was able to play immediately, so he did play in this game against Cleveland uh, and should be a a little bit of a help there as Seattle tries to replicate what Nuosu brought and Daryl Taylor tries to fill into those shoes as well. Next week, the Seahawks, the 5-2 and Seahawks, who currently, you can look in the bottom right corner of your screen, are first in the NFC West after their win against Cleveland yesterday and the 49ers lost um, to Cincinnati at home. Seattle moves into first in the NFC West at this current time, thanks to that San Francisco three-game losing streak. Uh, Next week, Seattle goes on the road November 5th at the Baltimore Ravens. That's a 10 a.m. start. This is going to be another tough team to play. Uh, I I talked about heavily throughout the course uh, of this episode itself. And last week's episode, previewing the game against Cleveland, the Ravens have a really strong defense. It's going to provide problems for Seattle's offense. I'd like to see them run the football more, play some complementary style of football, uh, and give your defense some rest. Because when you're going against Lamar Jackson, who can wear out a defense, you're going to have to give them some breaks. You can do your defense a favor, run the football, be productive. Uh, You're not obviously chewing clock in the first half, but you can give them breaks. So that is next week, 
on Fox, 10 a.m. Pacific time against the Baltimore Ravens. That, again, will not be an easy one. Uh, and they're not a lot of easy ones in the NFL anyway um, for our Seahawks.